them the wrong way. Um, okay, I live in Philadelphia, uh, West Philadelphia, that is. Born and raised. No, I'm from New York. But I like <laughs> Philadelphia. Um, and I'm here to do a workshop on scams uh, against corporations and other monstrosities like that as a direct action tactic to A, live for cheaper, and B, do your part in the revolution against the evil forces of evil. <laughs> <laughs> that workshop, by the way, will be tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, oh, and uh, if anybody's interested in building a dialer, if they know what it is, if they've heard it from the Adam and his package song, or if they've like, I don't know, if they just want to <laughs> you know, have one, um, my recommendation would be to go out and buy one today uh, at Radio Shack and bring it tomorrow because uh, I have crystals with me and I also have uh, soldering iron and all this other stuff and I can show you how to do it and it'll just cost you the price of the crystal or whatever, you know. And How much does a crystal cost? Five bucks. Okay. Cheap. How much is Cheap. a dialer? It's like 25 but the thing is like if, if everybody does like a dialer co-op thing, which would be the best idea, you can buy three or more at twenty two forty nine each, and then if you buy ten each, you can buy ten ten of them. You can get them for twenty bucks for the whole gaggle of them. Um, so like, I don't know. Everyone can just kind of team up. Radio Shack will let you do that. Radio Shack will let you do that. When you buy things, in, what's that? No, ten dollars for twenty dollars each. Twenty dollars each, right? And let me see. Uh, otherwise than that. Uh, I run a record label called Bloodlink, um, and I'm a puppeteer, and I'm in a, a band slash puppet troupe called the Bicycle Orchestra, and and amongst other things. Oh, and I'm an actor. Yeah. Okay. I'm Courtney Bennett, and I'm from Olympia, Washington, by way of suburban Pennsylvania, which is how I know Scott, like from Philly. Yeah. And um, I do the Olympia Zine Library. And I publish zines um, often, but never any particular zine regularly. Um, and I'm also a student at Evergreen. And um, I just dabble in a lot of things. Yeah. My name is Jenny Angel. I'm currently living in Ohio. And um, I publish Bucktooth. What? Volume. I publish Bucktooth and the zine yearbook. And the new edition just went to the printer. So if anyone's interested, I'll give you information. And then um, I wanted to mention that those two people over there are doing a Z conference in Ohio in June, and they have information, so you should get it. Yeah. And that's it. That's all? That's all. What am I admitting? <coughs> My name's Theo Witzel, and... I publish a zine called Spectacle. I've been doing it for kind of a long time, five or six years. We're doing a split theme. Jen and I have a split project coming out at the end of the month. And um, in 1995, I started a mail order distro called Tree of Knowledge. And last year, Mary Chamberlain, sitting here to my left, became the other half of Tree of Knowledge. We're kind of here to talk about that and anything else. I'm Mary Chamberlain, and I help him do tree knowledge. That's about it. I help her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sarah Jacobson, and I'm a filmmaker. I made, um, I was a teenage serial killer, which I have copies of. And um, I made a movie called Mary Jane's Not a Virgin Anymore, which is going to show tonight at 7 here, right? Yep. Yeah. And, um, and uh, me and Scott are on the lookout for some seltzer water, so... <laughs> Does anybody have any seltzer? No, we're dying for some seltzer. Thank you. The, um, the reason you all were invited to this event um, is because you're all people who are... Well, you, you've got sort of business interests that are not corporate involved. <laughs> like they, um, and... Well, one of the questions I have for you is just to ask each of you about <coughs> have you ever made money doing what you do or uh, is, is it more often a losing enterprise and you know where do you get your resources to do what you have passion for and, um, 
So we'll, we'll, we'll just go down the line with the question and uh, the discussion will evolve and eventually we'll like open it up to audience questions and it can be a free for all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, my motto is, and I started out with nothing, and that's just what I give my customers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, actually, I, I, I did start out with kind of nothing. I, I'd, um, I'd, lived with, I'd lived with this person, this other guy who li did a label, and um, he stole it pr pretty much everything I owned, except for my car. So I took off and went ac across the country and did scams. and. I don't know, this is when I just had started doing all this crap, well, like, 1991, and, uh, and I just got really deep into it and just saved a lot of the money that I had, and, and I wanted to put out records, you know, by my friends. I was writing a zine at the time uh, called Retrieval Incorporated, which I actually have copies of. It's a scam zine, and I was trying to disseminate a lot of information <coughs> about how to, how to, you know, how to get along for free and how to, how to do it ethically. Um, and how to have fun doing it at the same time, you know, because, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so I saved up money and I started putting out records and, uh, uh, you know, just by friends' bands. And eventually, you know, that started kind of perpetuating itself. And really I wasn't making money. It was kind of like, I did a lot of really stupid stuff. Like, like I didn't keep records at all for the first four or five years I was doing the label. Um, and uh, I would just, where I would write things down in a book and then lose the book or write things down in little pieces of toilet paper and then they, I'd find them, I don't know, in the toilet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, I gave, uh, one of the major problems that I had was uh, giving things on consignment to basically everybody that asked for it on cons you know and and I, I you know I had this ethic about why I was doing the label like that it was all based on trust in the, you know, from, from day one and and the, the big lesson that I learned is that you know I, I should have I should have had everything down on paper from day one I shouldn't have done consignment so much um, and I sh uh, because I feel like that really kind of perpetuated this like culture of consignment that that exists within like the DIY scene, which I, I think I I've learned over the years to find is like actually kind of bad. That I I'd, I'd rather sell things at I'd rather sell things at a cheaper wholesale rate and get paid up front for them than sell them at you know and sell them on consignment. Um, and take the risk of not being able to be paid for it because, like, there are a lot of costs that are involved in doing in doing like label. Like, you spend a lot of tel a lot of time on the phone chasing things down. You have to sp spend money doing FedExes. You have to spend money actually producing the producing the records. Um, it does take a lot of time. It's a lot of time and effort uh, keeping up with the mail order if you're doing something like that. Um, I don't know. I, I guess to answer the the question, like to start answering it, I I didn't really start um, making money with the label until I started really keeping accurate records of where everything was going, uh, and then I started discovering that really I wasn't making as much as I thought. You know, um, that I was kind of skimming. You know, like like the, for the first few years I was basically scamming. I was like you know doing a lot of shoplifting, so I didn't have to pay for any food. Um, you know, I, I'd get money from the phone company for free, and they just, you know, I just, it was basically subsidizing the label, and then when I kind of, like, decided to, like, get a better idea of what I was spending and what was what was coming in, like, I started writing down every single penny that I spent in a day, and every single penny that came in, and, like, <coughs> creating charts, and, like, and it was really, really hard to train myself to do this after after years and years of just kind of like living above the system, you know, just kind of like not, not paying taxes on anything. Um, uh, and at this point now, I'm starting to, I'm starting to make money uh, doing the label. Like, you know, it, it, it's enabled 